Hey, what's up, TGN? This is Thunderboss81, and we are about to have some fun because I, I've got the noobs on the run. So, I decided to take a little break this week from my taking on YouTube series and bring you guys sort of a little thank you present. It's almost Christmas time, and I want to thank you for all the support, all the feedback, and just all of the general comments and the love you've shown me on TGN. So, I thought I would make a video uh, explaining how to grow a successful YouTube channel, how to make quality videos, how to get a director ship, I guess, call it a director ship with TGN, and how to even get a partnership with TGN. So I thought I'd share some of the inside secrets that I think I'm allowed to share with y'all. I don't know, I might get in trouble for this video, but it's worth it for you guys. So the first thing I'm going to tell you guys, just right off the bat, is not to compare your channel with any uh, anyone who's higher in sub count or view count than you. Because the moment you start prioritizing of getting views up there and just getting views and getting subs, you lose sight of just the entertainment side of YouTube and the interaction side. When you're just trying to gain subscribers and trying to gain views, you know, you think, oh, hey, this new thing's come out. You know, if I upload a video really soon and rush it, I might get a couple more views than usual. And it's just, I would rather see a late video on a new topic than one that is absolutely terrible and obvious that it's rushed but out there first. So you definitely want to keep in mind that you're going to start off small but at the same time if you're not enjoying what you're doing no one else will be and you know if you don't like YouTube and if you don't see it as a source for entertainment and a hobby rather than a career I mean maybe it's not the thing for you I'm going to be honest with you uh, I've thought about this a lot and YouTube is definitely something I like doing even if I wasn't a TGN director, even if I wasn't making money for it, which I'm barely making anything, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I'm not that big at all, but I still like to share my expertise. I would still be doing it. Like, I know it sounds super cliche and everyone says it, but it's like, I live for these commentaries, and I really like whenever someone likes my video, whenever I wake up and I see more views on my videos, whenever I get an email telling me I've gained a subscriber. And if you don't get those same feelings, I'm going to tell you right away, YouTube is probably not the place for you. The first thing, which is the most obvious thing, is the quality control. Obviously, you want to be posting videos constantly. But at the same time, if you're posting a video a day with terrible quality, terrible commentary, you're not going to get subs, you're not going to get views. Because whenever someone sees your video at first or the video on your channel page, that is their first impression of you. And I'm making this up on the spot, but I would say that 75 to 90 percent of subscribers are gained within viewing the first 30 seconds of the first video that they watch of you. Because that's like the moment you shake someone's hand, you realize, oh hey, I like this person, they've got a firm handshake, not too firm, and you know, they're generally just a nice person, and they have good social skills, and I like to be around them. It's the same thing with YouTube, because if you come into your video and you're just like, hey guys, um, you know, I'm the best of all time, I make uh, Call of Duty videos on the internet, you know, I put 12 year olds and talk about it, people are just going to be like, man, who do, who do you think you are? And if you just like have the intro where you're just like, <coughs> achoo! Oh, hey guys, I, I don't really care about my videos, uh, yeah, you know, uh, audio's kind of out of sync. You have to make sure that everything's perfectly in sync, make sure you have the HD PVR, the black magic intensity. At this day and age, nothing below PVR quality will be accepted, and you will not grow if you have anything below that. Don't do something like, oh, well, uh, you know, at 200 subscribers, I'll buy a PVR. No, come on. I mean, if you really want to get 200 subscribers, what you'll do is you'll buy a PVR now, and you'll make the investment because you know that you're going to put forth the effort to buy that PVR and to grow your channel because you actually enjoy doing it and you're not making it a job giving your viewers a quota to reach in order for you to do something to improve your videos. Your viewers aren't there to give you reasons to continue on YouTube. You should have that motivation yourself. And whereas a comment is a lot of motivation, you shouldn't be setting things like, oh, 200 subs and I'll do this. No, just do it because you want to do YouTube. You know, I've already said that so many times, but I'm probably going to say it a bunch more. Pro tip guys, never get involved in drama. The first time you're pegged as a commentator who gets into drama, people will respect you a lot less. And the first time that you lash out angrily at a subscriber in the comments, 
people will respect you a lot less. So stay cool and remember, you're the one making the videos and if someone doesn't like it and they have a valid reason, get that from them, but if they don't, just ignore it or even remove the comment if it's too bad. Because the second that you come off as the bad guy, people won't like you and that's a good way to lose subscribers, viewers, and just to get people mad at you on the internet. So definitely don't do that, guys. The next thing I want to talk about is video titles. Now, video titles may not seem a lot to you, but they're what gets your, uh, your views in because that's the first thing someone really ever sees of your video. So there are two things that you want to include. You want to include something that will catch the viewer's eye when it appears in his sub box because that's about 50 to even 90% of your views right there. Again, making up statistics on the spot, but still. You also want to make sure that the uh, title will also appear when someone searches for keywords that are involved in your video. So you want to make the title exciting to where people are just like, oh, hey, I want to click on that. And you also want to make it informative so that whenever someone searches for something, like go to type in, uh, you say, zebra licking kitty. And then they're just like, oh, well, hey, here's the video. Whereas if you had it like cute animals, no one would ever find that from their search. And if you're a partner, you can include them in shows, which is a great way to get your views up. But since you're watching a video on how to uh, get noticed in the YouTube community, I'm pretty sure that you aren't a partner. And another thing is if you are a partner, thumbnails are great to get attention. Uh, you'll see like David Brown TV and I'm the Attack. If you haven't seen their thumbnails, go to their channel and check it out. Once you do, you'll see what I'm talking about as the attention grabber. So definitely make your video titles informative, but at the same time, not boring. Don't make them something like MW3 TDM commentary. You see those all the time in your cell box, and there's nothing, nothing special about them. Whereas if I said MW3 TDM gameplay commentary, how to get rich off of YouTube and how to be super successful and how to get women all day long people they would view that video and I'm not gonna put that as a title because it's kind of misleading but you get my point there's no reason to go overboard but at the same time you want an interesting title not like oh cool video bro watch this I'm awesome you know Another thing that you want to make sure is amazing is your channel background because whenever someone goes to your channel that's I'd say making up on the spot 50% of your subscribers are gained from your channel and if you see like just some image you made in paint of like your puppy with sunglasses on as your background people are going to be like oh you know he just he made that in like 30 seconds he's not into YouTube he doesn't have the MLG Pro background and so you want to make sure that you get a nice background made for you. Now a lot of people want to charge for backgrounds, but just take the time to look and you can find someone who does a great job on a great background for little to nothing if not nothing. So definitely make sure you have a nice background because that's another first impression for your channel. You want to make sure your channel looks professional, it looks nice, and that there's not like neon greens and nine cat everywhere and just looking like a mess. So next we're going to talk about how to become a director on the TGN, uh, more specifically on the TGN FPS. I'm going to tell you my story, how I got involved. Basically I was looking through uh, networks. I knew that I had what it took to be a director because, you know, I make good videos. I take pride in that I will watch every single one of my videos again, not being cocky or anything, but I feel like people watch my videos and they generally enjoy them and it shows in the feedback. But moving on beyond that, you want to make sure that your videos are something you're proud of. If you would not take this video and show it to every single one of your friends saying, hey, look what I made, look at the production value on this video, that is just, it's my best work. If it's not your best work, delete it. Because when you apply for a directorship, they will look at every single video just to see what you make and if you slack off for one video you might lose a viewer you might lose two viewers and if you're big you might lose a thousand viewers so definitely you want to put your all into everything you do and like I always say if I'm gonna do something whether that something be I don't know making a video or 
opening a can of soda. I don't even know, guys. I will do it to my fullest potential, and I will make sure that I open that can of soda, and I'm proud of me opening that can of soda. And another thing is you want to, uh, to network with some of the directors from that network before you apply, just to get uh, your name around with some of the top people. Like, I've had uh, about five people come to me and ask me if I could put in a word with the tops, and I was like, you know, uh, I looked at your channel, and you honestly don't need me to put in a word. But I really want to, uh, to say how important networking is, because once you're in that community, it's going to be the people in the community who help you grow. A thing with us on TGN is that we're all following each other on Twitter, and we just tweet out each other's videos. It's like, hey guys, we even have a special chat for that. It's like, hey guys, made a video. 30 likes now. You're all in this. I expect to see them. And generally, you get a bunch of good feedback from your directors, and that's just awesome. But what you want to do is make sure you have quality content, then apply, and if you are rejected, you want to ask the recruiter why you were rejected, you know? I mean, a lot of times you won't get a response. In fact, I don't think you get a response if you're rejected. But if you have contacts and uh, if you've been networking with some of the people inside the network, they can get you that information so you can know how to improve. Because if you don't know what you're doing wrong, how are you going to improve? Like, you should ask your viewers every uh, episode. If they dislike the video, tell you why. Because if you just see dislikes constantly through your videos and just a constant stream of dislikes, you're like, what am I doing wrong, man? Like, I feel that my videos are great. I feel that I'm putting everything into them. But someone could find something I could improve on. And if you find something I could improve on, by all means, please share it in the comments and feel free as a token of my gratitude for making me a better commentary to dislike the video because I enjoy seeing constructive criticism and stuff other than your stupid get off YouTube I don't even know how you can turn on a computer so definitely those are some things you should check out before even thinking about applying to become a director now we need to talk about that partnership everyone wants to be partnered everyone wants to have that sweet looking background with the links to your Twitter, to your Facebook, to your t-shirts, just to everything and you know you want that. That's just your dream to see it on your channel and basically I'm gonna add a few things but if you follow the tips I've already told you within time you will have your partnership. Now a partnership is really tough to get. You have to be partnered through a network to get a partnership. I'm gonna tell you right now if you apply through YouTube, they will deny you just based on the fact that you make gaming videos. They hate gamers. And so you're not going to be partnered through YouTube. You have to become partnered through a network. And TGN will partner anyone who meets their minimum requirements. I believe it's... I don't know. I think it's a thousand views a day, maybe 600 views a day. I don't know what it is, guys, but you just, you need to keep making quality content, and you need to keep interacting with your subscribers. Set up a Twitter page, set up a Facebook page, and post every time you upload a video. Let fans submit you questions, maybe do a Q&A to interact with fans more. And really, it's just, it gets to where you have to be on a personal level with your fans. They will spread the word. Your fans are the people who will get you out there. It doesn't matter if you're making the best videos in the world, if you don't get your name out there, it doesn't matter because no one's going to be watching them. So you want to make sure that your fans like you and that you interact with them enough to where they feel inclined to tell their friends and like your video and be like, oh hey, you know, this guy's he's a pretty good guy, he makes solid videos, you know, I really like it, I'm entertained through his videos, and I feel like I kind of connect with them on a personal level. And so, like, you'll see my Twitter in my, uh, descriptions for every video I make. You'll see my Facebook. You'll even see my Skype. So you can talk to me if you have a question about just about anything. So that's like, I interact with you guys. And I have my subscribers following me on Twitter. I talk to them. Uh, I even play with most of my subscribers. But you want to make sure you have that personal level. And you also want to make sure that you are networking. I know I've said it before, but sub box, sub box, sub box. That... I mean, a lot of people say it gets you inactive subscribers, but how many times have you looked at someone's sub box to see who's in it? I mean, a ton of times, haven't you? I mean, if you're shaking your head no and you're just like, Thunderbox, you're an idiot and I hate you. Well, you're a weird person because I know I always look at them and I usually go to their channel and check it out. So 
If you're in someone's sub box and you have a good background and you have quality content, chances are you will gain subscribers from that and chances are that they will be active. So that's about all I have for this video. Uh, I want to thank you guys for watching it. I know it's kind of a lengthy one, but I just really wanted to get my point out there and to kind of help you guys out. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up if it helps you. You know, please take a second to add it to your favorites. Comment with what you want to see next. And I will be back next week with a taking on YouTube. Please comment and tell me what you want the subject to be because I have no idea at this point. Thank you for watching. Follow my Twitter. Add me on Skype. Add me on Facebook. My name is Thunderball81. And that was a really long plug for all of my stuff, but I am old.